living on the ocean exposes you to the elements like no other way of life. The wind can funnel and twist. There's angry squalls, thunderstorms, even water spouts. Often, it's just a gentle ocean breeze that waxes and wanes with the heat of the sun. But all of these different kinds of wind dictate how we sail around the world. I'm Ben. That's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Twenty-eight countries later, and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. One of the things I really want to talk to you guys about is the kinds of winds we experience out here. And some of them are really crazy and you may never see them, but most of these we encounter almost on a daily basis. So this is just to give you a little bit more depth of other than just us saying it's windy and to help you kind of identify these winds when you're at home, when you're going for a walk, or when you're sailing or when you're getting ready to sail around the world. To start off with, let's look at funneling winds. Not only do they happen on the ocean, but also in city. Essentially, anytime wind is forced between two land masses, it will speed up and bend around them. Think of putting your thumb on the end of a garden hose. The velocity increases and the direction changes. Now, this can happen on a macro level across countries, but also on the more micro level. Tell me about funneling winds. So on the other side of this island, it's blowing east, northeast on that side. On this side of the island, it's going southeast because the wind is wrapping around the island and also funneling off of El Nido, which is right ahead of us. It's 30 freaking knots. We're talking on the micro level here. El Nido in the Philippines is comprised of massive limestone cliffs that rage out of the ocean to incredible heights. Explained from above, it's fairly trivial. The wind simply speeds up and bends around the island. But this isn't your typical low-lying atoll in the South Pacific. These islands create huge gullies in between them through which the wind has to accelerate. It's funneling through this gap in the mountains up here and wrapping around the islands and then funneling between the two. So we actually came to the Philippines because there's huge funneling winds here and it makes it really good for kiteboarding. And we've found some amazing kite spots here. It's been absolutely fantastic for kiting. Totally amazing kite spots here. However, Right now, we're just trying to find an anchorage for the boat. The problem with kiteboarding is you need like a protected spot for the boat, and then you need like an exposed area to kite. You want the wind for the kites, but you don't want the swell and the dangers for the boat. It's 35 knots. I think let's go somewhere else, okay? Let's go somewhere else. Very similar and often mixed together with funneling winds are what's known as catabatic winds. If you zoom out and look at a more macro level, wind will cross oceans more or less unimpeded. Eventually though, it will hit land and be forced up and over hills or mountains. After crossing the Pacific, many sailors make landfall in what's known as the Marquesas, a set of islands part of French Polynesia. There's possibly nothing more magnificent after weeks at sea, nothing more rewarding after seeing nothing but a bunch of water, fish, and crewmates. <laughs> Being exhausted, sailors drop their anchor in what's known as the lee of an island, a place where there's very little waves and wind. Fatu Hiva. Hooks down, baby, hooks down. Yeah, anchor's down. It's pretty cool here. We're at the back of the pack. Should be interesting. Deepest anchorage we've ever been in. Like way deep. So it'll, it's, uh, it's kind of cool. We'll have to see how this goes. <laughs> Our bottle of champagne. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Whoa! That all went on my throat. But look at the view at our back, and it's like super private. It's amazing. Of course, the winds continue to blow on the windward side and will be forced up and over these islands. It's really unpredictable and incredibly powerful as they come shooting downwards at unsuspecting yachts. You will go from a complete calm to your rig howling as if it's a hurricane. It never lasts long, but can be incredibly dangerous when sailors get lulled into a sense of safety, only to be suddenly overwhelmed by storm force gust wind. When you're sailing around the world, you cross the equator multiple times, sometimes to weave around landmasses, 
other times to avoid cyclone or hurricane seasons, and every time you do so, you cross what's known as the doldrums, a place with very little wind and lots of squalls. Squalls are essentially just massive columns of air rising throughout the day that come crashing down as the day goes off, bringing with them lots of rain and wind. This is exactly what happened to us as we were sailing through Papua New Guinea. That is Papua New Guinea. It's the north coast of Papua New Guinea. And the thing is just covered in squalls. It's crazy. And I think what's going on is they're just piling up and causing huge thunderstorms. Crazy at night, every single night here in Papua New Guinea, there's lightning and thunder over top of the mainland, the highlands. It's so cool to see. It's so cool to see these microclimates. During the day, squalls are quite easy to spot. They're simply black, angry clouds. If they're late stage, they'll be spewing rain out the bottom side. But at night, it can be a different story. You often can't see them coming if it's really dark out. So you can sort of make out the squalls ahead, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get some more rain. I feel a bit of breeze now, so probably get a bit of wind too, but uh, welcome to almost the equator. I guess squalls happen all the time when it's almost the equator, so I should be expecting this. Thermal winds are a constant pattern out here. As the sun comes up, it heats up surrounding areas, causing trade winds to often be reinforced. It causes more funneling wind throughout the day, and you may experience a sustained puff of wind right at sunrise or sunset when you're sailing offshore. Thermal winds can often be dependable as clockwork starting at a particular time in the late morning or afternoon and building till just after sunset. The most common thermal is a land or sea breeze which cause onshore or offshore wind. It's the basic principle where during the day land will heat up and cause warm air above it to rise. This is replaced by cool air rushing in from the ocean. And at night, the same sort of thing often happens in reverse when the cooling land becomes colder than the water producing an offshore breeze. Water spouts, on the other hand, are quite rare out here. We've only seen a handful of them in our travels, and they look magnificent, magnificently powerful. They're essentially just tornadoes on the water, although generally not as powerful. And there's basically two kinds, tornadic and fair weather water spouts. Tornadic water spouts can be extremely dangerous and are spawned by severe thunderstorms or overland. Fair weather water spouts tend to have a weak rotation and are generally not as dangerous. That said, sailors don't take them lightly. So we've talked about funnels, thermals, sea breezes, land breezes. We've talked about water spouts, catabatic winds, squalls. I don't know, I think this is pretty cool personally. I think it's cool to know what's going on when you look up and you see a cloud and you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. That's what's going on. I don't know about you guys, but if you're into this, maybe just go for a walk, look outside the window and get curious, see what's going on around you. The earth is constantly trying to find equilibrium and as such, wind rushes from one spot to the next. And although each of these winds can be identified quite easily, there's often a more complex pattern going on. You will typically only find water spouts near squalls. You will often find an increase in squall activity where there is warm tropical water. Weather is really complicated. If you choose to live your life on the water, you're exposed to this constant change. It directly affects your way of life. And sometimes we choose to stay put in the harbor, but often we use an afternoon thermal to our advantage. Okay, how'd it go out there, Ben? You looked good. How long was it out for? 15 minutes? Uh, at least half an hour. Half an hour? Yeah. Half an hour, I twisted that ankle. I cut that too. Yeah. On the foil. And then I put a nice cut on the hip. And the wind picked oh, yeah. up. Yeah, too much, too big of a kite for that size uh, wind to contemplate my next move. Beer or twin tip? I'm thinking champagne. It's our last night here, right? Yeah, could do champagne. But it's not four yet. It doesn't start at four, but it it absolutely cannot start before four because that's outrageous. I'm not going back in, man. There's blood dripping <laughs> in. That's it. Game over. What I really 
hope you guys do is when you feel wind on your face, look up and try and figure out what it is. Is it a land breeze or is it a sea breeze? Are they just trade winds? Who the heck knows? Maybe you will know after this video. Get curious. I bought one beer today, one. It's an Asahi. We're in Malaysia and it's $3 a beer here. That's a lot. This same beer was $1 in Palau. Gotta cut back, I guess. Or drink water. <laughs>